dad was like, you know, you're probably never going to windsurf again. So I was like, well, I'm going to still sail. I'm going to still go around the world and buy a boat and, and do it. I'm doing what people dream about and pretty much thriving on a boat. So if the world doesn't work for you, change it, yeah. make it work for you. I think there's going to be difficulties in every, every part of life, right? And that's part of my life. You get a support network, make them raise you, you raise them and it'll all be good. I'd really like it if I could have inspired someone who was in a little bit of a hard time to come out and like own it. And that's, that's the aim, like, even if it's just one. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Okay guys, last night we had a visitor, his name's Craig. He came to the boat, he initially wanted some advice um, on some gel coat work that he's trying to do on his boat. But he ended up staying for the whole evening. We had a bunch of beers and we uh, got to know him. And he has one of the most inspirational stories I've heard in a very long time. And he asked if he could tell our story to you guys. And I said 100%. So we're on our way to his boat now. He said we can just raft up to him. He's got an Oceanus 46, a Beneteau. And uh, let's go meet Craig. Get ready guys, this is really inspirational. Permission to come aboard, sir? Yeah, jump on. What's happening, brother? Not much, not much. Just looking through some old photos. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Realise how, like, how much changed. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Craig Wood. I'm a triple amputee. Uh, and I'm sailing around the world with my girlfriend and son. When I was 18, I was uh, in the military, in the infantry, in the army in, in Britain. And I got sent over to Afghanistan April 2009. Uh, by July 30th, 2009, I was blown up by an IED. It's an improvised explosive device. Nobody died, only I got injured. In my platoon, there was 30 of us. In my section, there was eight. We were on a little dirt track, and I remember that we all just took a knee, just to get some water in us. And then, as we set off again, I must have got about 10 steps in, and I saw a white flash, and just like a really heavy landing. And then my friend, like running back to me, shouting my name, and that's. And that's it, that's all I can remember. I, I had such a massive trauma to the face, to the body, you know, it's, um, it's a lot, right? So yeah, they just stop you freaking out and lashing out and dying essentially, they just put you in a comatose state. When I was in hospital, um, like in the ICU and I'd just come round, my dad was like, you know, you're probably never gonna windsurf again. And I was like, so I start crying my eyes out, like, why would you say that to me? Um, but then the day after it came in, he came in with like a, an email address for the development coach, Paralympic development coach for sailing. And he's like, maybe they'll, you know, maybe they'll like want to take you on or whatever. And I went down well, in a cold November, you know, 30 knots like, weekend. Um, and it was fantastic. Put me in front of a VSR, uh, which is just a rib um, on my wheelchair, just no jacket, just. <laughs> And yeah, that was it. I, I fell in love with the sailing element there. I uh, became a professional sailor in 2012. Um, and then in 2016, we didn't make the uh, the Paralympics. And we knew that 2020 wouldn't be a thing because there's no Paralympic sailing in the Paralympics anymore. There's not enough worldwide participation. So I was like, well, I'm going to still sail. I'm going to still go around the world and buy a boat and, and do it. Yeah. Yeah, so I had a blind guy, um, Liam Catamall. He's like blind world champion several times over. Wow. Um, yeah, I remember him telling me once that uh, they're that good that other boats are telling them to leave them alone and they're match racing. You can't <laughs> leave them alone, that's part of it. And yeah, they're just shouting, leave us alone. This is like, that's when you know you're good. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's really cool. He has like 10% vision 
the way he describes it is if you look down a straw and that's his whole field of view and that's all he can do and when it's dark he's blind and the other guy was in a double amputee uh, steve palmer he was engineer in the military okay um he got blown up as well so we we met in headley court and then he was like, so we put a team together and it's like yeah, yeah let's do it we did all right we got to about eighth in the world um it was out of like 14 um but still yeah eighth in the world <laughs> uh, all right so then um and then you bought this bike no i bought a colvic victor this is a 40 foot catch it's a motor sailor so i bought that boat and i basically motored it all the way to greece it didn't really sail very well and then i got so annoyed on it by that time i knew exactly what i wanted out of a boat basically as soon as i stepped on this yeah i'll take it what are some of the difficulties with sailing sailing a boat um mostly going down below and and the other things are that like there's a really nitty gritty two-handed jobs i'll say shackles for example it's yeah. a very good one you usually have to do it two-handed hold the shackle put it in i do it one-handed yeah um and tying knots some people can't tie bowlings to save their life i do it all one-handed i think there's going to be difficulties in every part of life right and that's part of my life if i go away from sailing i'm still gonna have difficulties it doesn't matter so i may as well do it to ones that i like you started this trip alone right oh uh, yeah on this boat i started on my own yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you found love. Yeah, I'm solo sailing from Sicily to Barcelona. I picked up one guy in Barcelona. Yeah. Took him down to um, Gibraltar, and I was like, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna get a, like a load of randomness on the boat. I think. And every single day they'd come, they'd come past, big backpacks on, and they're like, look, I'm not going yet. I've got no rigging. I don't know when I'm gonna leave. But if you wanna come on the boat, and I'll teach you, you know, how to tie a knot or whatever. Yeah. If you don't know anything then yeah feel free so my boat became like this um hub for all the, all the backpackers yeah even think they were bringing food cooking stuff like that i was like this is really cool i had about eight germans on at one point just in the marina just you know helping them out and then renata was part of that i, I really liked it straight away yeah. um and then you get to know her and get to know her and she's like a proper hard ass we've just had a baby well it's a year old but we've had a baby uh he was born in the boat bottom of the companion way steps um yeah it's called amaru which is uh mapuche chilean when he was born it started raining and rain is amaru in mapuche gotcha. so, so it has to be right it's just too nice so yeah he's called amaru a big part of it is i'm i'm doing what people dream about and you know i'm i'm not really struggling like i'm pretty much thriving on a boat I'm triple amputee. I think if anybody's in a bad way or or can take inspiration from my story to motivate them to do something good for their life, I think that message needs to get across. It could really help someone. When I first came round out of the coma, my mum basically uh, was really harsh, like really tough. Yeah. Um, I'm laid on a bed, I couldn't speak because they had the tracheostomy and they put this like plug in so you can speak. And my mum's got like this, this uh, alphabet just pointing at every letters on the alphabet and i'm like can i have a drink instead of just saying drink so i'm doing everything the wrong way and the long way and learning but i saw some guys walk in i was like why are they walking into icu like and she saw it in my eyes she's like craig don't she's like nope i'm gonna i'm gonna cry my tits off so i did i had an absolute roar of a cry like six hour cry and then she goes out she's upset that she doesn't know how i'm gonna get out of that rut right. bearing in mind i've been awake two days and found out I've got no legs, face is fucked, you know, whole body's a mess. And she came in and, and yeah, she, she said, she's like, you know, what what changes, what's gonna change after that? After you've cried, like, well, how, how can it, you're just gonna keep crying, you know? Right, yeah, I get your point. I like, can't say it, but it's like, yeah, yeah, fuck. Yeah, you're right. And you can, you can just sit there and get into this downward spiral of, that you're not able to get out of, because you don't have, that support network that I had, like them just might not have it. They might not be able to say that, or even show that they're suffering, you know? You've got to keep, keep a strong face. Nah, man, like, you get a support network, make them raise you, you raise them, and it'll all be good. Yeah. Like, it has to. And I don't want it to turn into inspiration porn, and you might not have heard this term before, but it's when someone says, why am I crying about my life when your life must be so bad? And that's the wrong way to look at this. Like we're not, we're not trying to make it seem like 
I'm doing these incredible things to make anybody feel bad at all. It's the opposite, total opposite. So if I do make somebody upset because I am doing these good things, then I may have to delve a little bit into their psyche just to, just to see why that feeling has arise. But I've had it a couple of times when, you know, they're mostly joking, but in a serious manner as well. They're like, why, why am I stuck here in my life when your life, look at you. I'm like, Whoa, what the fuck? Like, sorry I got myself out of a rut and did something. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's the point now, isn't it? Like, you're doing something and I'm not. And you, know, you end up making them feel bad because you've done this, you're doing these great things. You're like, shit, man. Yeah. Well, then let's do it. Like, what do we need to work at to get you to this level? And I'm like, okay. You know, action breeds action, right? If you don't like your job, quit your job. Get a new job. Like, it sounds easy. It does. Well, it is in a way. Like, if you don't like something, stop doing it. Start small. Um, do things that you are comfortable with. I know there are quite a few people who really like to push themselves out of the comfort zone. Um, but if you're not one of those people, and you're struggling to um, trust in trust in your skills or trust in an ability to go out there and just do it. I drive to the ocean when I was learning to sail. I drive seven hours just to learn how to sail. Yeah. So it's doable if you've got the time to do it. If you haven't got the time to drive to the ocean every other day, like go to a lake and get a little dinghy. And they, a lot of people say dinghy sailors make the best sailors because they've learned about the wind. I didn't know anything about engines when I got a boat, anything. I still really don't. Um, but you've got to be an electrician, a plumber, a mechanic. That's got nothing to do with sailing. So just to purely sail a boat, it's not actually that difficult. But when you're living on one, that's when all the other skill sets come in. I'm learning every day. Um, and I don't think there's anybody on the planet who's not. And we're all doing it little by little. It's just that we're, we've learned a little bit more than what they have right now. So it's a quick curve, like yeah. it's a big up curve, but you'll get there. moments when you wanted to give up uh there was one and it was when i was solo sailing from ecuador to panama and there was no wind and i got a bit you can actually see it on one of some of the videos i'm like I started my trip officially i'm happy to be sailing again and by like day four i've gone 50 miles and i'm like um it's gonna take me about four years to get there it rains a lot it's sunny a lot it's windy not very often but it was just that that moment of frustration. And I want to actually sit down and you go, you know, it doesn't really matter if I'm going to take two weeks, two months to get there. I'm going to get there still. The boat's fine. You know, everything's good. I can't use the disability <laughs> as the excuse to quit anything. Yeah. Um, I play ukulele still. Sunday morning, rain is falling. I can't play guitar anymore. I don't know what that is. I just can't do the guitar anymore. I can't do it all. But the ukulele, I was like, I've never played it. Tiny little thing. Like, yeah, this is great. Yeah. You know, um, I know there are some things that I probably can't do. Yeah. I've done kite surfing. Yeah. I went, uh, Renata came in Patagonia. We're in Puerto Williams, like the most southern village on the planet. And um, she's like, Do you want to go horse riding? Like, yeah. Yeah, why not? I was like, Do I need anything? She's like, I, I don't know. I didn't think you were going to say yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go horse riding. So we did, and the guys there were like, uh, yeah, yeah, just sit on it and we'll be fine. So, I was. There's some things that are very difficult that sometimes I don't want to do. So, for example, there's we've got shades that run off the boom, and I put one, I put one clip on, but you've got to like open the clip, slide the slider um, piece of strapping through, and close it. Cannot physically do that, actually, cannot do it. So, that's okay, I know that. I just don't put that side down right now and I'm gonna change it so it's something I can do. So if the world doesn't work for you, fucking change it. Like, make it, yeah. make it work for you. I'd like to be able to one day meet a, a person traveling and then go, you know what, your words really helped me out of the world. I'd really like it if I could have inspired someone who was in a little bit of a hard time to come out and like own it, you know? I, I think that, Doing that for somebody's got to be like one of the best feelings on the planet, right? Really helping someone, right? Because the monetary thing is nothing. Like you can give someone money and might not really help them. You might not have the right mindset to use it wisely. 
but helping them like in their physical like being yeah that that's big like that's a real big deal and that's that's the aim like, even if it's just one even if it's after i've died and someone said it to my kid or whatever be like i think it's just that's that's just the aim that's beautiful man thank you so much oh, for sharing you. your story bro yeah i'll put a link in the description below yeah. so that people can follow you thank you That'd and nice. uh continue to watch your journey because it's very inspirational and uh i'll also put his instagram link below and i'm trying to encourage him to do more social media stuff because it's so cool and it's so inspiring i think you're right i think you're right you're gonna do it we're gonna do it <laughs> So good meeting you, my man. Same to you. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Keep in touch. Yeah. Let us know how you're getting on. I'll try. See you later, brother. Later. All the best. And you've done a damn good job with the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I feel like it's a very touching story. Our main focus is to inspire people and, and, and motivate people. And when he asked to share his story, how could we not share? that you know people tell us that our story is inspirational but that is just next level and um, to be able to tell that story for you guys just now um, was a real pleasure hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week